I want to start this exciting webinar for um, 2022. I'm happy that everybody has joined. Um, this uh, is titled Deaf Coaches. Um, so we'll have a family panel and a coach panel, and we'll have discussions about each other's experience and how they support families. And families will talk about their experiences um, as having deaf coaches as part of their journey. My name is Jack, and I'm part of the CSD core curriculum uh, outreach resource um, education. So it's a core training program. And this webinar, has been uh, set up originally because of COVID. And we tend to provide a lot of trainings for teachers of the deaf, provide research resources for families. But then when COVID hit, we started doing remote and uh, we set up the webinars at that time. And that just kind of just continued from there. And we're on our second year now. So it's really nice to see people from all over the United States joining us. Um, to uh, talk about these topics and what our challenges have been and you know just kind of collect information to share with our families and our schools so it's nice that this is just really universal i'm really glad to have everybody back and some new uh some new participants so i'm going to start with introductions Teresa Knoll. uh she is the lead k family services manager uh, and she, that's part of NorCal uh, in the state of California. She will act as moderator and she's going to be talking with the three deaf coaches. Um, now, the second part of this, uh, Laura T. Peterson, that's uh, my colleague and she's in early intervention, which is part of the zero to five program. And she will be managing the, uh, the parent portion of this webinar. Um, so how we're going to run this is we hope to have a lot of discussion and uh, as we near the end, we'll have a Q&A and again, if we run out of time, then just type your questions in. They're very important to us and I will retrieve those from the chat and we will answer those questions um, and if we do have time left, then great. Um, and Laura will answer as many questions as she can. And hopefully you guys have a lot of questions to ask. Now, we also have a Spanish interpreter as part of this, um, who is voicing in um, somebody that voices in English and in Spanish. So I just wanna make everybody aware if you're a Spanish speaking family, you can click on global interpreting that icon and that will switch you over to the Spanish channel and you can hear this presentation in Spanish. Okay. So uh, enjoy yourselves, and I really hope that this uh, webinar is beneficial to everyone. Thanks. Hello. We're just waiting for the deaf coaches to join in. There are three of them. Okay. So while we're waiting for everybody to join, my name is Teresa and I work for the Lead K Family Services Program here at NorCal uh, Services for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. And uh, this Lead K program is California Early Hearing detection uh, program. And we are unique in that we have added uh, deaf uh, advocacy services as one of our goals for uh, receiving grants. So we're really thrilled today to spotlight that and uh, talk about um, deaf support and what that looks like and how that benefits uh, families. So today we have three coaches joining us. We have Shelly, we have Devana, and we have, uh, I'm sorry, I missed the name, Jennifer. Um, so first, Jennifer, Jennifer Snow, she is a teacher for the BEST program at NorCal Services for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing. And uh, she has been an advocate since 2016. She works in the schools and in human services 
field since college, about 30, 30 years. Uh, I won't ask her age. <laughs> We're not going to do that. <laughs> um, Devana is the Dev Coordinator for CEID, that's Center for Early uh, Center for Early Intervention on Deafness. And she has been working with Deaf and Hard of Hearing Services for the past seven years. Uh, next, we have Shelly. And she works for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Services Center in Fresno uh, for almost 14 years as a client service specialist. She works in many different family settings, teaching ASL, um, how to communicate with your deaf or hard of hearing child or baby. She also works with deaf and hard of hearing clients for seven core services that the agency provides. So welcome all of you. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first question I have. <clears throat> That's for Jennifer. Which do you think is the most important skill that a coach should have? So the most important skill I believe in my experience and what I've seen is the ability to evaluate and observe um, family, you know, the family and figure out what areas to work on. I, you know, like noticing like, oh, the, you know, maybe the parents need to use more facial expressions or maybe they need to use more signs within the child's visual um, parameters. So, so I think that is a really good skill to have. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's good, a good that's thing good to advice. think about. Good, th good thing to think about. Uh, I think oftentimes I've taught ASL, but we don't think about the other skills needed within that. So thank you. So Devana, next question is for you. What do you love about deaf services and working with families? Wow. Um, I really, uh, you know, enjoy this work. I really want to bring families together. I want to see families develop um, and learn, you know, ASL and see how that really um, can be beneficial for their child. Uh, you know, and I know it can, it, it can, you know, it can be challenging to learn another language, but it's really nice to see the family's commitment and motivation. Uh, and that's so inspiring for me when I see that. Yeah, and I'd like to add also the moment when the family signs and the baby or child recognizes the sign or signs back, that moment is just, it really makes the job worth it, right? Oh, very much so. Yeah, you know, then you can see, yes, we can communicate. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, Shelly, I'm going to go to you next. Uh, so in your experience with uh, working with deaf families, do you have any experiences that you'd like to share that you feel especially proud of? Sure. I can give two examples, two different families. Uh, one is I've worked with one family uh, and they were all Hispanic. Uh, mom and dad only spoke Spanish. They knew no other languages. They know no English no other languages. So I started to teach the whole family. They had four children. Um, the oldest son was deaf and the younger three were hearing. So I went out to uh, home visits weekly and I worked with the family. Um, so in working with them, I, like I said, I'd go there every week and I went for a, a pretty long time. Uh, and I bring materials and, you know, lists that would include Spanish and English. Um, so I would have them ready and able to teach the parents uh, the ASL and they could read um, the, the materials at the same time. And they would have like a picture and you could see it. They could see it in English and Spanish. So they'd be able to pick up 
the English at the same time. So again, parents didn't know English. So while they were signing, they also began to pick up English. And I communicated with them through the Spanish video relay service. At, at the time, there was no other way to communicate with them. So we had a, a little bit of a rough start, but then we started to pick it up. And mom started taking ASL and English classes to develop her skills. And uh, then over time, uh, they really started to pick it up. And you know, we can text them without an interpreter. Uh, can text mom and dad back and forth. And I still work with that family and we can have conversations and I'm just really proud of them. I'm really proud of mom for really just rolling up her sleeves and she can communicate with her son now and have conversations before it was very difficult, just very few signs. So now that they can have conversations that it's just really, um, I, I'm really proud of that. Uh, another family I worked with about four years ago they had a daughter about 18 months old that was deaf and the parents knew a little bit of ASL. So I started going out to the home weekly until COVID hit. So then we had to change over to Zoom and it was not easy, but we persevered, we kept going and uh, parents started to pick up some signs and then really started to pick it up. And now we can have conversations, uh, the parents and I. So I'm really proud of both those families. I think they're just really, it's really my passion to see families able to talk with their children and communicate um, and have conversations. It's so important. And um, I think the two important things that I've seen that help are patience. It will take time to learn a new language. Yes, yes. And then just perseverance. Those two, are, those two things or characteristics are what I have seen in those families and patience is just really key. And if you have that, you will become successful. I'm sure that the parents felt very frustrated at first, but as we went along and they started to develop their skills, it's become easier and easier as time went on. So I see those, both of those families are really doing great and I'm so proud of them. Great, that's a great story. Thank you, Shelly. Yeah, I agree. The work that we do is, is not easy. It's not always easy. And uh, what families go through, sometimes you know, they're in shock from having a deaf child. It's not easy for them either. So it's just really important for us to really get involved and say, it's okay, I'm a deaf adult. I'm the same as your child, you know, and I'm successful, I can help. I can, you know, work with your child and we can all work as a team. So that's a beautiful story. Great, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask another question to the, the three of you. Let's see, um, what do you all like the best about working with families? Ex excuse me, this is the interpreter. I've lost connection, I'm sorry. Can, can we stop for a second? I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I think you guys can hear me, but I can't see you. I'm going to have to come back in. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm back. Um, 
Yes, that's a very important bonding with the family. It's really, really special. And once I started working with the families, our bond will continue from there. No matter how many years, no matter if the family stops their services, we're still there for the families. Um, and that makes the parents feel that they have, that they're empowered to be able to learn sign language, to communicate with their children, you know, um, without us, you know, they may feel lost, they may not know where to go. And um, having us to support them and encourage them, that's just really where my pride is with my work in, in our families, um, just supporting them, encouraging them and being there for them. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, now I have one more question for the three of you. Um, if we have time, I wanted to talk about working with families, going out to their homes, but uh, going to school with their child, the, the individual uh, service plan for the families, um, the ISP team, sometimes people don't realize that um, deaf coach can be involved in those meetings. So could you expand a little bit on that situation? So yeah, so most of the time I do end up doing home visits. Sometimes we go to the store, we go to the park, we go to a restaurant, whatever setting kind of the family uh, is interested in. I, as a deaf coach, can meet them at those places and we can inter see how they interact with their child in those different settings and coach them on how to you know, engage their child. So do you send your work reports out to the team to the, at the school? Yeah, so I share my reports with the teacher, the district, or the county, whichever one I'm working with. Um, I share my reports to them and as well as my boss. So yeah, that's good to, to not only have the family, but also the teachers involved and and have everybody on board. So thanks for clarifying. Shelly and Devana, did you wanna add anything? Um, yes, I work closely with the schools. Uh, we don't have any contracts, but we do work closely with the schools, which is fortunate for us because we have, we have good relationships with the, sh with the schools and the teachers are always contacting us about our program. That's good. Yeah, so, um, if uh, the parents allow us to dis to have discussions with the teacher, we are able to uh, do that. But most of the time we just speak with the parents and the parents will share whatever we uh, talk about with the teachers, so. Okay, great. Devana? Um, I wanna add that for me, it's a little different. Um, so I'm a, a teacher's aide, lead teacher's aide here at SEED. Um, and so I'm always working with the teachers and we have monthly meetings with the teachers. And then we also have monthly meetings with the families. So, you know, if there's any concerns on any side, I end up sharing that communication. And when we have an IFSP meeting, you know, I can also share what I'm seeing with the child at home because sometimes, you know, the teachers don't know how the child is communicating at home or, you know, so, and they could be very different. So for me, I can kind of share the, um, you know, what's happening or yes, I agree or no, actually, I don't agree with that because this is what I see. Okay, Shelly. Uh, yeah, in addition, if uh, the parents need us to support them in the IFSPs, they are always able to ask us and we can send a representative to their meeting. You mean from the agency? Yeah, the agency offers that service, yes. Okay, great. You know, the title, it takes a, or the quote, it takes a village. You know, it's nice for the family to know that they have a village of supporters to help them. So is there anything else anyone wanted to add before I turn it back over to Laura and the parents? Anything anybody wanted to, add like tips for anyone who's watching and uh, something that you'd like them to remember. Any last words? <laughs> I just wanted to mention uh, to check on our events, Love and uh, Literacy. That's on March 5th. 
uh, coming up. So I just wanted to um, put that out there. It's at six o'clock on uh, California time. So please join us it's statewide. Thank you. Yes, that's a good plug. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Um, so thank you all. I'm gonna turn it over to Laura now. Yes, thank you, Shelly, for mentioning that love and literacy. We can send out a link or, uh, to um, everyone who is at this webinar. Um, and I just wanted to thank Teresa and Shelly and Devana and Jennifer for willing to participate in this conversation and sharing your experiences. It's really, um, the families are really fortunate to have you all. Um, you know, I know that it can be, sometimes it can be scary for the families, but I'm sure that you guys make them feel very comfortable. So thanks. Yeah. Okay, great. So now, thank you. Now I'm gonna switch over to the parent conversation. And Daisy, you're gonna be signing so, and I'm gonna be talking. Okay, am I on screen? <clears throat> Great, all right, um, wonderful. So I'm Laura T. Peterson. I work here at the California School for the Deaf, uh, supporting families throughout Northern California who have children ages zero to five who've been identified as deaf. Uh, so um, I'm really excited to have parents. It's always nice, I think, to hear from parents of uh, young deaf children um, because their experiences are are, are invaluable. And these parents have, I think are courageous. I think it can be scary to get a deaf coach, to get some stranger who, you know, uses a language that you don't know or not very fluent in to, you know, come into your home or, you know, I, I know during COVID, some of these visits may have been happening over Zoom, but um, I just want to just thank you all for doing that and sharing and being brave enough to share your experiences today. Um, so first we have Christiana who lives in San Francisco. She is the mother of a kindergartner who's adorable. I get to see him because he attends the California School for the Deaf. He's in our kindergarten class. Um, she says she can't, she has, you know, challenges with learning sign. I'm not sure I believe her, but she has lots of skills in other areas. Um, and she really wants to approach this journey as a parent with an open mind and an open heart. So, and you live in San Francisco. And then we also have Nikki who lives in the Sacramento area. Uh, she has two children. Her youngest is four years old and is deaf. She has had a deaf coach since, um, since Emery was 11 months old. So, um, so she gets to share her experience. And so uh, one thing I didn't mention is, so uh, Nikki, your deaf coach was Jennifer, right? And then Christiana, your deaf coach was Devana. And then um, we have Nick, who is from the Fresno area. Uh, he uh, has a wife and three kids and his four-year-old daughter, Ida, it, Isla is deaf. Um, and he, your coach was Shelly, right? So, all right, great. Um, so just to ask questions um, to start this off. Uh, Christiana, do you have, I think there's a lot of people who don't know about, you know, how do you get a deaf coach? How do you work with a deaf coach? How do you even start this process? Um, it can feel overwhelming. What advice do you have for families about getting a deaf coach? Oh, we can't, we can't hear you. You might be muted. There. Okay, now I will speak. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to be here. Um, basically, what I would say about advice for families getting a deaf coach, the initial deaf coaches don't have to be formal or even a single person. Um, when you go for the formal deaf coach, you want to make sure you absolutely find one that fits or clicks with your family, your kids needs. So if you need two for different aspects, I would say, go for it. If you need to take baby steps, do it. Different families will have different needs, goals, and momentum. 
I would say just keep accepting the invites to the DHH meetups, to the death camps, to the car activities, CSD activities, or even go to the Deaf Library in San Francisco. Um, if you're more comfortable starting with hearing parents who also have a deaf kiddo and a deaf coach, start there. Uh, it is going to be awkward. It's going to be a little embarrassing at first. Be prepared to dread the meetings a little bit, to have some squabbles with your partner because you're both nervous, and you may even have some tears in a private moment. For me, I just had to take a deep breath. I had to fake it until I made it and just jump in. I would say the more you explore, the more connections you're gonna make and the easier it's gonna get. Just keep reaching out. There are so many hands coming from the deaf community. All you have to do is reach out and return. Wonderful, wonderful, thank you. Um, uh, Nikki, like, uh, how do you, how is a deaf, can you share like how having a deaf coach, you had a deaf coach for several years, how that helped your family, what you saw? Oh, it, it helped us tremendously. Um, so my husband and I were both working full time um, when our daughter was young. So it was hard for us to carve out the time to learn. Um, you know, this was a brand new experience. I don't, Nikki, I don't think we can hear you. I think you froze. Okay. Uh, now we can hear you. Okay. So I'll try that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as I was saying, my husband and I both worked full time when my daughter was young and we were trying to learn ASL. Um, it was very, very challenging. And so we couldn't attend a lot of things together. So having Jennifer come to our home and teach our family and teach us about routines that are relevant to our family was really helpful. Um, you know, everything from uh, eating meals, uh, bath time, uh, playing with my daughter's favorite toys, uh, teaching us how to read to her and reading some of her favorite books. Um, again, just everyday routines was really, really helpful. And then building upon that vocabulary too, so that we can begin to describe what we're doing and, and. Oh, yeah. We, Nikki, you, you, you're, we can't hear you anymore. Are you still there? I think we must not have a great connection. We can't hear you, Nikki. You were saying some great stuff. Um, all right. Can you hear oh, me okay? Now you're back, now you're back. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so you were saying, you know, sharing resources and such. Yeah, so, so building upon the vocabulary that was relevant to our daughter and describing uh, the, you know, the ways to play with her different toys and um, her favorite books, uh, learning how to read to her, all of that was incredibly helpful to us. Great, great. Um, I'm going to ask you the question, uh, do you have, what advice do you have for families who are considering get a, getting a deaf coach? Do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. We're, we're extremely. Ah, we lost you again, Nikki. All right. I'm going to have to switch. Nick, I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> What advice do you have for families who are thinking about getting a deaf coach? I'm sorry, uh, Nikki, but the, we seem to be having some technical issues. Uh, yeah, I would recommend it strongly. Um, I think initially uh, we didn't, I, maybe before even the first session, we didn't really understand what exactly we were gonna be getting. And uh, I think the first session was awesome. There was a interpreter there. And so things went really smoothly and then we, when we realized that the interpreter was only going to be there that time and then we were on our own uh i think initially that was intimidating and uh but you know it's been a really awesome experience where uh like shelly was our is our coach and just does a great job of like taking things slowly and especially like once we uh built initially the like finger spelling 
we were able to communicate slowly with things if we didn't know exactly a word or something, but just building language from that as a base and being able to um, build vocabulary that we were interested in learning as, and if we had any questions on how you do um, different signs of things. And, and Shelly is awesome with a lot of detail on like really making sure that we're uh, signing as well as possible uh, as we're learning and as we're going and just so that we can reinforce that the more we know the more we can uh, introduce to our daughter and be working with her on, every day throughout all our activities. Great, great. That sounds like that worked out really well. Um, I, I have a question for I guess all of you. Um, what, you know, after starting Deaf Coach Services, what did you notice that was different that you did differently as a family? What did you notice different? Maybe your child responded to responding to the deaf coach. Um, what were some things that you noticed as a result um, of having a deaf coach? Uh, I know for us that uh, it, it gave us more language to be able to communicate with our daughter and build through things. Um, and she was relatively young when we were going. So just like little things like signing, like change diaper and having her communicate that back and just building that language and having her communicate with us and us be able to communicate with her um, more and more. Cause that communication, especially at that age is just so key. And to have that, uh, I mean, it's not something that we were familiar with before. And it's been something that we've just loved diving into and learning as much as we can. Um, and it's been a lot of fun to uh, add another language and just look into the uh, various resources and, and everything with that. But our, our, it, it is something when uh, we found out we had our daughter was deaf and, and she lost her hearing, um, that it was uh, a challenging thing as, as we were going and uh, to not be able to communicate as we would expect, I guess, or as what we maybe had envisioned uh, was tough, but uh, getting tools and, and learning to sign and stuff like that was just a, a real cool experience as we've built communication. And we've had great support from our family where like my brother has come to, to some of the deaf coaching sessions, my, my mom, my wife's parents and stuff like that. So it's been like a whole family thing where everybody's really embraced it and wanted to learn ASL. And, and now it's something my brother and I both coach uh, water polo together sometimes in the off season and we'll sign to each other from across the deck, even uh, like coaches, like I coach swimming also, even coaches that they, they don't sign, they've learned things because I'll wave across the deck and say, Hey, turn the lights on. And then they'll go, Oh, wait, what, what sign was that? What is that? And now we can signal without having to just scream ourselves hoarse from across the deck uh, what we want them to do. And so it's, it's just been a really cool enriching experience for us that has been a lot of fun. When we need to be quiet, my wife and I can sign to each other or if we're someplace where uh, maybe we wanna say something we don't want somebody else to hear, we can sign like little things back and forth. And so it's been a really cool thing in addition to just the ability to communicate with our daughter, obviously. Oh, that's amazing. It's amazing. So it sounds like not only has your extended family benefited, but like your community has benefited. You're sharing that deaf gain, you know, that you have, that you have access and ways to communicate. And, um, so that's wonderful. Uh, anybody else want to add anything? Christiana? Sure. Yeah. Um, I would also first want to share that I'm a deaf plus mom. So if anybody has any deaf plus mom questions over here. Um, yeah, I would say that the deaf coach has helped us to make sure that when we do have Frankie in a hearing environment, say, for instance, he plays soccer on Saturday, then one of the things Devana came to um, soccer practice and made sure that, because my signing isn't quite up to all the questions that I had for Frankie about, you know, can you hear the coach, what's going on, and Devana, that was something that was really helpful for us that she could come into the hearing environment and really act, help the family interact with Frankie, our deaf son, um, in, and make sure that his, that he was getting everything that he wanted to, um, 
that he needed to access. So that's been something that's very helpful. I would also echo Nick in that sometimes when you are the immediate family is kind of the basis for ASL, specifically maybe mom or dad, you get put in the position of interpreter a lot. And instead of asking the child, they turn to you and say, what did he say? Can you, how do you sign this? Or they want to argue with you about, no, that's not the right sign. You say, okay. And you can refer to your deaf coach. No, that's what Devana says it is. Or if they have questions that they've asked you too many times because they don't like the answers about how you're constructing, you say, do you want to let's get a meeting with Devana. How about we all meet with Devana? Because then you can sort of the honest is kind of the pressure is taken off the family and moved to with, you know, your backup system of the deaf coach. Um, Nikki, did you want to add something? I think you left and came back on. So hopefully your That's connection's easy. a bit better. Oh. oh, but I think she's frozen. Ah. Shoot. Um, just real quick, uh, like Christiana said, my, my daughter's also deaf plus. Um, she's autistic and deaf. Um, and there was a question in the chat um, about children with implants. And our daughter also has implants. So um, I can address that if you want, or I don't. I'm sure. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, yeah, the, the question in the chat um, was about uh, children with implants, how common they are, which I wouldn't know the answer to that, and then uh, how it's perceived by the mentors. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, from our experience, um, we've had nothing but support and uh, we it was a really tough decision for us. And uh, what we decided on was to uh, hope to have her as uh, our, our daughter be bilingual and um, be able to uh, potentially hear and speak as, as well as sign. Um, and we wanted, went with a total communication uh, model. And that has been something that uh, our deaf coach has supported and uh, really helped us to build on the, the ASL and the uh, signing side of that. Um, but um, for, for us in that situation that was asked about, uh, it's been very positive and wonderful. And uh, I, I can't speak to other coaches, but Ours was awesome. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, yeah, and I, I, you know, as far as deaf coaching goes, when we talk about deaf kids, it's the whole spectrum, whether they have cochlear implants, whether they can speak, you know, whether, you know, all, all of that. Um, because, you know, the whole idea of a deaf coach is to have parents understand what it's like to navigate as a deaf person, which only a deaf person can really share. You know, like, um, you know, one example, I remember having a family who, you know, their child would throw a tantrum when the doorbell rang and the parents all of a sudden were engaged with the kid. And then all of a sudden they just shifted and the kid did not know why, like all of a sudden the parents attention went somewhere else and it's like oh well how do you you know maybe we need to put in a light so the kid also knows that the, you know that the doorbell is going off just some ways there's just um things that maybe families hadn't didn't think about and what a deaf coach can do and go okay how can we make you know the deaf child feel like this is they know what's going on in their world. They have control over their environment. They can communicate and all of that. So um, it can be really invaluable. Um, Nikki, I see you're nodding. I think we have you. Did you want to add anything? No, I, I was just going to say kind of along those lines too. Um, one thing that was really impactful is, is learning more about the deaf culture and Jennifer's experiences uh, growing up as a child. And then again, navigating the world now as a deaf adult and what an impact that made on us and the choices that we make for our child too. Great, great. Christiana, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I would echo that and that one of the real things that Devana gives me that nobody else can give is how it feels to be a child who is deaf and going through life with hearing parents and you know, different stages. And that's something um, I just, I, we couldn't replace that. It's one of the things that why I know that Devana in some capacity will be with us for the rest of her life, our lives, um, that 
that's invaluable that what she gives to us. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, I hear from families who did not have deaf coaching early on. Oh, I wish I had met a deaf person earlier on um, because they didn't know what to, what to expect for their child. You know, can I have the same high expectations? Are, you know, are they going to get married and have a career? Um, can you guys share, did any of your expectations change as a result of having a deaf coach or, you know, and your deaf coach may have taken you to deaf events or something and met other deaf people? Hmm. Yes. No? Okay. No, I was going to say something else. Yeah, go ahead. I had um, actually uh, coached a uh, water pole player whose mother was deaf. Um, and she's a professor at a uh, university here um, and had known their family and had always found interacting with her very intimidating. I, I felt like I didn't know how to do that. And that was, it was always something tough. And uh, it was something that when, um, when we found out that Isla was deaf, uh, they were somebody that we reached out to um and like met with them and they talked with us on things and it was something to where like now they're friends and resources of ours um and it's something that uh i i think i, I can understand my hesitancy in the past and being intimidated by the process but i wish that i would have um opened that door even even sooner and, and not been as intimidated by it and i think uh we've had opportunities um through the uh, Shelly giving us some information and stuff, going to different deaf events in the community, and knowing, um, realizing that we knew more than more deaf people than we realized and stuff like that, um, has really helped us. I don't think that um, we ever were in a position where we were like, "Oh, all is lost," like nothing is possible. To where we needed to have um, it modeled, like, "Okay, well, look, you, there." Are, lots of deaf people successful that it's not a um it doesn't prohibit you from a, a achieving yourself and, and reaching goals and, and everything like that it shouldn't change um the goals you have for your, your child it just maybe adjusts the path that you go to them um and so i lost my train of thought <laughs> um, but uh yeah i i think that being being around deaf adults and uh, I mean, even sitting in a, in a driveway uh, and playing a game uh, that I, I don't remember the name of it, but it's like you do an animal sign and then the next, and you're, everybody's doing a thing and then the next person does the sign and then a new one and everybody has to keep going and you're kind of throwing it around because um, the parent and the, the kids that I, I knew from coaching all four of them, I, I co all four of their children, I coached, and they're all as codas. Very, they're fluent in ASL and stuff. And so it was, it was an interesting community. And their neighbors across the street also were in the aquatic program that I coached. And so, like, it was a, it's a really neat environment we were able to be in there, and just kind of uh, taking the risk and, and understanding that there's going to be times where you're uncomfortable, and that's okay. Like that's how we grow as as people, and that that growth is important for uh for the decisions we've made as a family to uh give our daughter the best opportunities and communication methods and, and language as possible so sometimes we make ourselves uncomfortable so that uh things can be better for her great and we're less and less uncomfortable now it's it's uh it's it's something I, uh, there's a book called the silent garden that um is was a really good resource for us and there's been some uh, there's uh, conferences at Fresno State that we've attended. Uh, one was for Deaf Plus. Uh, yeah, the children Deaf and Garden. Stuff. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a silent. It's yes, yeah, it's, it's something in that that range. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. You've been lucky to have you know had lots of deaf adults that you met or codas and all of that. Um, yeah, and it 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 can be uncomfortable. Uh, you know, I. I'm, you know, I learned learning, I'm learning Spanish and I am scared. I, you know, when I try to talk to somebody, I break out in a sweat and I get all flustered. So, 
yeah, it's hard. It can be hard. It, it's uncomfortable. But the thing to think about is what does your child feel like? Are they, you know, if they're in the hearing, you know, if they're mostly in the hearing world and a hearing environment, are they feeling like that a lot of the time? And what can you do, you know, as, you know, family members to make them feel more comfortable and um, make them feel accepted and recognized as who they are? And, you know, having a deaf coach, yes, they provide all this instruction to your families, but they're also the child gets to see a deaf adult as well. There's, it's just, um, yeah, there's just lots of, lots of benefits that we don't necessarily measure. Yeah. Um, anything you want to add? Otherwise, I'm going to ask a question from the Q&A that seems to be directed to the parents. Um, I would just add that, yeah, basically from our time at SEED, which we really enjoyed, and now our time at CSD, um, I realized that there's no limits for Frankie. There are other people may perceive limitations for him, but we are not seeing that. We it's full steam ahead. There's no there's no hesitancy about planning for a, a full future. You know, so that's yeah, great. I, I would echo that as well. I couldn't be more proud of our daughter. Um, and and uh, yeah, she's. She's wonderful and, and the sky's the limit for her too. Yay, that's so great. That's so great to hear. Um, so this one question is, as a parent, is it more important for a deaf coach to have an open mind or have an opinion about language options? Not sure if that makes sense to you. Um, I, I think Nick, you said your child speaks and signs, I don't know. If all your kids do, if, you know, did you feel like your coach was accepting to that? How did they support you in that choice? Um, so, so our, that, that was our goal. Our, our daughter is deaf autistic uh, or yeah, deaf and autistic. Um, and uh, currently um, she is still nonverbal and uh, non-responsive with things, but that was, that was our goal um, setting out with things. And uh, our coach was very supportive of that. Um, uh, I, I think that the, in, in general, when you're, when you're looking at options and you're researching things, there's, uh, when you, when you Google most things, you get a medical opinion on things and, uh, an opinion, uh, typically maybe written by, uh, a hearing community. Um, and so I think it was, um, uh, Shelly was awesome as well as uh, our other friend um, at giving us both perspectives and uh, while sharing, uh, making sure we had a complete view of the picture and had everything. And uh, once they understood that we had that complete view and we were weighing all of our options, they were very supportive in the option that we chose. And so I, I, I think that uh, the people that we interacted with, um, we were very fortunate. They were uh, open-minded, um, supportive of our decision, um, and also very much like shared, wanted to make sure we had all the information possible uh, before making that decision. So it was a positive experience. I, I think there was kind of both sides to it. And I, uh, we have interacted with people that haven't been as open-minded to it. Um, but we were very fortunate that our team um, was very supportive and wonderful with that. Great, great. Um, another question is asking you, how did you get connected with a deaf coach? Who connected you? Um, I can start that one. I keep looking to see, like if Nikki's unfrozen, Nikki, do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sorry. The connection is terrible for some reason. Um, so we we were actually connected through our um, early start program. Um, our the, My daughter's teacher of the deaf um, arranged the deaf coach for us and was there for the initial meeting as well. Great, great. Um, for us, we were connected first through um, California Children's Services. We had a home visitor, Sean Renee from SEED, who was wonderful. I can't speak highly enough of her and home visitors in general, although I admit I hated them at first because it's very intimidating having someone come in and you feel like they're going to judge your parenting. 
that's not what they're there to do. They're there really to, to love and to support you. And so um, then we ended up going to Seed. Um, we met Devana there. At first I thought, oh, well, she can help me learn ASL. And um, oh, no, I needed much more than that. So um, that was how we I hooked up with Devana. But I would say that there were many people through uh, people we met at Dakara events, people we met at the library for the deaf in San Francisco, um, people through San Francisco Hearing and Speech Center. There were people there all the time we could have hooked up with. It was more of a discernment of who is kind of right for us. Now, Devana, I feel, is a perfect match, one, because I love her, and two, because she has some similar um, issues with Frankie. So that's something that, for instance, she has microtia on one side, and Frankie has bilateral microtia. Um, so that's something that really... I said, oh, okay, I can see where that, um, this will be good. This will be good. Um, yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. There's all those little things that you don't think about, but yeah. Um, all right. I think I'm going to have the deaf coaches join because there's a question for the deaf coaches. Um, so if they can show their video. Let's see if they can join. And we're waiting for Sh Shelly and Jennifer. Here, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, Shelly. Um, all right, so the, one of the questions I have, one of the questions, and here, I'll let you sign, Daisy, sorry. Um, one of the questions I have is, in the chat, is the reports, you know, what information do you put in there? What information do you not put in there? Um, how does that, you know, how do you make, uh, you know, what information is valuable, what's not? Anybody want to answer that? Anybody want to answer? Devana? Um, I, I don't have that much experience um, doing a full report, but I work because I work with the teachers. Uh, the teachers um, have ASL goals. And so I make that part, you know, I, I talk about the progress the child's making, uh, but we can put down, you know, what the goal is and that progress. So I, I really support the teachers in, in for the IFS peoples. Great. Um, Shelly, you want? Yeah. Um, did, there was a question from Wendy Merritt asking what resources we use to provide Spanish families and where they would get that. So uh, we have developed, we developed that ourselves. So we have a Spanish translate, translator or interpreter for us, and then we put it in the report. Um, and so we have developed that whole system ourselves because it's not easy to find resources online. There's not a lot out there. So we went ahead and developed that ourselves. And I can share that information with you uh, if you'd like. Perfect. Thanks. Maybe Shelly, you can uh, type your email and then she can connect with you. Maybe that in, sure, in sure. the chat. We have a couple more minutes. There's uh, one more question. Um, uh, and I'm not, I'm trying to figure out uh, how did, oh, so this is for the families. Um, how did you manage working uh, with other family members, their needs, along with deaf coaching. Um, you know, I we don't have regular working hours, so I wanna get the most out of the visits, not only when mom's available. So how did you kind of make that work with 
yeah, Christiana. Zoom, Zoom, because, um, it, I mean, generally it is me who does it. I've been trying to get my husband to do it, but if Zoom, because that way, if you have a computer connection, do it. And if Zoom is giving you problems, go to FaceTime um, on the phone. Okay, great. Anybody else have? Um, how, do it, how do they made it work scheduling with other family members it, it's since COVID, it's been zoom um uh but uh prior to that uh what we would do with our our weekly um coaching session uh was uh schedule it at the end of the workday, um uh, where it worked with her schedule to where um, some of our family members that were attending and stuff would go into work early that day so they could be off and be there, uh, or just take an hour, uh, leave a little bit early. Like we're able to have flexibility with their job to, uh, do that. But obviously scheduling in the middle of the day doesn't en enable that, but we were able to, uh, make it work with the schedule, with our schedules and our deaf coaches schedule, uh, at the end of the work day to where, um, it balanced out that way to where um, we were able to, I mean, it's, everything's important, but uh, we made it a priority um, and uh, we're able to either go in early to work or miss some other things and say, hey, this day I'm going to be a little bit late or I'm going to be a little bit uh, early, whatever, or I'm going to need to cut out uh, type of thing. So it was, it was something that um, we tried to accommodate as much as we could with when it was and then uh, had to, uh, we were fortunate to have some freedom within the rest of our schedules to do that as well. Great, great. Thank you. We are running out of time. Um, you know, one thing I want to, you know, add is like, I think Christiana, you said this at the beginning is, you know, um, you know, the first deaf coach might not be a fit. You might have to find somebody else, but there's also opportunities to go out into the community. Um, it's, it's, you know, valuable for you as families to interact with deaf, more deaf people. It's also incredibly valuable for your child to see, you know, other deaf adults and other deaf children, um, you know, and as you interact more, the more comfortable you get. So, um, but I know it can be scary and I hope other parents who are listening to this, watching this, um, feel like, okay, all right, I will take that step. I will reach out. I will get a deaf coach um, because it really, um, you know, your child is with you for the rest of your life. They are going to become a deaf adult. Figuring out, understanding their world and their perspective um, will only make your relationship stronger. So I want to thank everybody. Um, you know, Teresa from Lead K Family Services, Shelly from Deaf and Hardy Hearing Service Center in the Fresno area, Jennifer Snow in the Sacramento area, uh, Devana in the Bay Area. Um, as deaf coaches, thank you. Um, hopefully people will see that you're not scary. <laughs> um, and I want to thank Nikki from Sacramento, Nick from Fresno area, and Christiana from the Bay Area for being willing to answer questions. And um, I appreciate that. The Love and Literacy event is a great event to bring your child to meet other deaf people. It's a great opportunity. Um, we haven't had a lot of opportunities in the last couple of years, so take advantage of it. I will send out that information. It is on March 5th, so. Wonderful, thank you. Oh, I'm gonna put up a slide that has our the contact information for Teresa um, about getting a deaf coach. Um, I work here at the California School of the Deaf. Like I said, I support families. Uh, if you need help negotiating with your school district, you know, how to get a deaf coach, I'm happy to help. So I'm gonna put up our contact information so you can reach out to us. Thank you, everybody. Really, really appreciate it. And I'm now going to share the screen. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Juan, for interpreting. Thank you, Daisy, for interpreting. And have a great day.